Today's lesson is about measures of center. We're going to talk about the different types of measures of center and when it's best to use each one to describe a data set. Let's get started. First of all, what are measures of center? Well, measures of center are averages for a data set. So if you have a large uh, set of values and you want to describe them in a concise way or a short way, you can use a measure of center to do that. So the different types of measures of center are mean, median, and mode. Range is also something that usually gets uh, lumped in with these measures of center because you need a data set to calculate it, but range is not a measure of center. It's a, just a calculation you can, you can derive or you can get from a large data set. Let's start by talking about the different types of data, too, because you need to understand the difference between when we can get started. So let's use an example of uh, going fishing. We're going to talk about that in a minute. You can talk about categorical data when you go fishing, and that's things that are sorted into groups or categories. Or if you go fishing, you can collect numerical data, which are values or observations that can be measured. So some examples of things that you can uh, calculate or find or sort when you go fishing. Uh, categorical data might be the types of fish you caught. Numerical data, however, might be the weights of the fish you caught. So types mean names like salmon, bass, and bluegill, whereas numerical data would be the weights, so something like, you know, how many pounds they weigh. You can measure the inches, how long they are, that kind of stuff. Anything that would be relevant to fish and catching fish. Okay, so when we calculate mean, we're going to use numerical data because you need numbers to calculate a mean. So, uh, mean shows the average of a data set, or it also shows the points on a number line where the data is balanced. And I'm going to show you that later on. But I want to go over the basics for how to calculate mean the old-fashioned way first. So, to calculate the mean, all you need to do is find the sum of the values in the data set. So, basically add them together. And then divide by the, the number of values that are in the data set. So, I have an example data set here. There are five values in this data set. One good habit to get into is to put your numbers in order from least to greatest before you start. Uh, you're going to need to do that for the median and the mode anyhow, and even the range is helpful. So it's a good idea to do it at the beginning of every single uh, set of problems. So I put these in order from least to greatest, and now I'm going to add them together. And after I add them together, I have to divide by the number of values in my data set. So again, there are one, two, three, four, five values in the data set. So if I take the 127 and divide by 5, that will give me the mean of this data set, which is 25.4. So what you'll notice about the mean is that it will not always be an integer or a whole number. Sometimes it will have a decimal. Uh, it may repeat. It may not repeat. Um, or you might want to choose to write your mean in fraction form also, because that's acceptable. All right, so take a second, hit pause. Try to find the mean of these two sets of data, and then you can check after you're done to see how you did. All right, there are your answers. What you can see about question one is that it is a repeating decimal, so use your repeating sign to show that. In question two, the number doesn't end or repeat, so I just rounded mine to the thousandth place. So, uh, but what I did in both problems is I added up my values first and divided by how many values there were. So there were six values here, divided by six, or seven values here, divided by seven. All right, now let's explore mean as a balance point. So I'm going to give you some uh, definitions about what this means, and then we're going to do an example to show you. So mean can also be described as the point on a number line where the data distribution is balanced. You're probably thinking to yourself, what does that mean? I have no clue what you're talking about. Well, here's another way to explain it. The mean also shows the sum of the distances of all points above the mean is equal to the sum of the distances of the points below the mean. You're probably still thinking to yourself, I don't get it. Well, uh, here's uh, an easy way to show you. Mean as a balance point is a visual thing, so if I show you on a number line and just give you the procedures for doing it, it's going to make a lot more sense. Uh, so what we need to do is get a data set first. So here's a data set, and let's put that data set on a number line. So I have a number line here. I have my data set. So I'll put a dot at 1, a dot at 8, 7, 4, 9, 7, and 6. All the sets of numbers from here are now on my number line. And to find the mean as a balance point, I'm just going to take these dots and I'm going to find the outermost ones, the ones on the far left and far right, and move them in one space at a time. 
and I'm going to keep doing that until I can't move them anymore. What you'll see when you're done is that the dots will all stack up on the same number on the number line, and that will show you the mean or the balance point. So let's move these in. The 1 is going to move into 2. The 9 is going to move into 8, just like that. Now let's do it again. Take the outside one, so that's on the outside, and 8's on the outside. The 2 is going to move to 3. One of these 8's is going to move to 7. Okay? And I'm going to continue to do that until all the dots are lined up at one location. So let's take the outside ones, the 3 and the 8. Let's move them each in one. So the 3 goes to 4, the 8 goes to 7. The outside ones again, the 4 and the 7 are out on the outside. So I'm going to take one of the 4's and one of the 7's and move them in. So one of the 4's moves to 5, one of the 7's moves to 6. Take the outside ones again. So 4 goes to 5, and 1 7 goes to 6, just like this. Take the outside ones again, move it in 1, in 1, in 1, in 1. And what you'll notice is all the dots line up at 6. So that shows us that 6 is the balance point, which is also the mean. Right? So now let's check to make sure that's right, because what we can do to check is add our numbers together and divide by 7 to see if 6 is actually the mean. So if I add all my values together that are here, 1, 8, 7, 4, 9, 7, 6, and I add those together, I get 42. If I divide by how many I have, there are seven numbers there, I get 6 as my mean. So the mean and the balance point are the same thing. Uh, one is just shown on a number line, and one is done with some math uh, calculations. So let's do one other thing. Let's see why this works. The reason it works and the reason it's called a balance point is because it's kind of like a seesaw. If all these dots are in the correct spot and the balance point is in the correct spot, the seesaw should be balanced. It shouldn't tilt one way or the other. And if you think about a seesaw, the, when it's balanced, it has the same weight on both sides. The mean as a balance point works the same way. We're going to see how far away from the balance point each of these values are on this side and then on the other side. And we're going to add them together and the weight or the value should be the same. So let's take a look. Um, 6 is on the balance point, so that gets a value of 0. All right? This 4 gets a value of 2 because it's two spaces away from where the balance point is supposed to be. The 1 out here is going to get a value of 1, 2, 3, 4. It's five spaces away, so it's going to get a value of 5 from the balance point. Now let's do the other side. Both 7s are one space away from the balance point. The 8 is two spaces away from the balance point, and the 9 is three spaces away from the balance point. So if we add our yellow values together and get a sum, and add our green values together and get a sum, they should be equal if 6 is the true balance point. So let's do that. 2 plus 5 or 5 plus 2 is 7, and on the other side, 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 is also equal to 7. So you can see they're balanced. So there's a value of 7, or think of a weight, a weight or a value of 7 on this side, and a weight or a value of 7 on this side. All right? So the sum of the numbers to the left is equal to the sum of the numbers to the right. It goes back to the definition that we talked about earlier. All right, now let's move on to median. Median is just the number in the middle of a data set. But before you can find the one in the middle, you have to arrange them in order from least to greatest. So let's uh, go through our steps. Arrange them in order from least to greatest, and then find the number or numbers in the middle. There might be more than one number in the middle, uh, and in that case, we have to do a little calculation to find the median. Okay, so if there's two numbers in the middle, we get to find the mean. So let's look at our first data set. Let's start by putting it in order from least to greatest. There we go. And now let's find a number that, uh, in the middle. So we're going to cross out from the ends to do that. So cross out those two. Cross out those two, and what's left in the middle is 27. So 27 is the median. Now let's try a different example. I added a number to the data set here. So let's put them in order from least to greatest first, just like so. And now find the number in the middle. So cross out from the ends, cross out from the ends. And I can't cross out anymore because if I did, there'd be no numbers left. So 27 and 34 are both in the middle. So to find the median, I have to find the mean of these two numbers. So to find the mean of them, I add them together and divide by 2. And when I do that, I get a value of 30.5. 30.5 is the median of this data set.
All right, so do some practice. Put them in order, find the one in the middle, or in case, some cases maybe the two in the middle, and calculate a median. All right, there you go. So question one, you had to do the uh, mean of the two numbers in the middle, because there were two, and you get a median of 17. And in question two, there was only one number in the middle, so the median is 10.1. All right, now let's do mode. Uh, mode uh, involves less calculating, and it's kind of like median where you're just looking for certain numbers. Uh, mode is the number that appears the most in a data set. Mode is most. That's how I remember it. The words sound similar. All right, so to find mode, put them in order from least to greatest first because it's easy to find numbers that repeat when the values are all in order. And then you're going to choose the one that appears the most often. In some cases, there might be more than one that appears most often. So you could have one mode, more than one mode, or no mode. So let's find the mode of this data set. Put them in order from least to greatest first, just like that. And then look for numbers that repeat or appear more than the other ones. So in this case, 12 appears more than the other ones. So in this data set, 12 is the mode. In example two, I changed the data set slightly. So let's put them in order from least to greatest. And now let's find the numbers that appear the most often. So 12 appears twice and 27 appears twice. So in this data set, they're both a mode. 12 and 27 are both modes. It's called a bimodal data set because the prefix bi means two. So bimodal means two modes. Now I changed the data set slightly again. So now let's put them in order from least to greatest. What you'll notice here is that when you go to look for numbers that appear the most often, they all appear once. So if they all only appear once, there is no mode. And that's how you'll tell me the answer. You'll just write down no mode or type in no mode. All right, for the last set of data, put them in order from least to greatest. So every number here appears twice. So in this case, you're going to say no mode. And you might think to yourself, why? Because a bunch of numbers appear more than once. Well, the definition of mode is the one that appears the most. And there is no number that appears the most here. They all appear the same number of times. So when numbers appear more than once like this, and it takes up the entire data set, and each number appears the same number of times, you're going to tell me there's no mode. 2 does not appear more often than 5 or 8. 5 doesn't appear the most or 8 doesn't appear the most. So there is no mode. All right, so uh, put your numbers in order from least to greatest here, and then try to find the mode or modes, or maybe no mode, and then when you're done, you can hit play and check your work. All right, there are your answers. Uh, in question three, both numbers appear four times. That's why there's no mode. In question one, there's no repeats, so there's no mode. And in question two, the negative eight and the zero both appear twice. They're both modes because there are other numbers in that data set that only appear once. All right, so last, last but not least is range. Range is not a measure of center, but it's still something we can calculate when we have a data set. So to calculate the range, you just order the numbers from least to greatest again, and then you find the, the difference, or, or you subtract, the smallest value from the largest value. So in this first example, we'll put them in order from least to greatest, and then we'll find the difference between the largest and smallest. So here it's 78 is the largest, and 8 is the smallest. So 78 minus 8 is 70. So 70 is the range of this data set. All right, let's practice the range. Put them in order from least to greatest and then find the difference between the biggest and smallest. Hit pause, and then when you're done, you can hit play and see how you did. There are your answers. The range for question 1 is 68 minus 7, so 61. And the range of question 2 is 12 minus negative 8. So you got to remember your keep change change rule here. That turns into 12 plus positive 8, so 20. So the range is 20. Uh, just as a reminder, use number lines. If you can think of number lines in your head or if you want to write them down, count the spaces from negative 8 to 12. You have to jump 20 spaces on a number line to get from negative 8 to 12. That's why the difference is 20. All right. So now, last but not least, let's choose the best measure of center. When do we use mean? When do we use median? When do we use mode? What's the best one to choose for a different for a particular set of data? Well, it depends. Okay, it all depends on whether or not the data includes um, certain values. So when you choose the best measure of center, center, 
uh, you want to look for the, an outlier. So when uh, the data set does not have an outlier, mean is the best measure of center. When the data set has an outlier, median is the best measure of center. And when the data is categorical, like types of fish again, you're going to choose mode because the one that's chosen the most often. So if you're doing a survey of like, you know, favorite sports, the one that is chosen the most would be the mode, and that would be the best way to describe your survey results. But we got to talk about this word outlier, though. The word outlier is important. You're going to hear it in this unit a lot, um, and it's going to help you determine answers to questions like this, when to choose a best measure of center. Uh, an outlier is a number that doesn't fit in with the others. So it's one that's either a lot bigger or a lot smaller than the rest of the numbers. All right? And so let's look here. In this data set, uh, we're going to try to find the mean and the median. So the mean here is 19. The median is 18.5. Uh, they're both pretty good representations of the entire data set. But if you look at the data set, there's no outlier. So the best one to choose in this case is the mean because it's the most accurate. Now let's look at another set of data. Something should be jumping out to you right now. And what should be jumping out to you is that all of the numbers are in the teens or low 20s. And then you have this number 260 at the end. That number does not fit in with the other numbers. It's very far away from it on a number line. So look at what it does to the mean. If all of the first five numbers are between 14 and 21, and then you put 260 in the uh, data set, it jumps the mean all the way up to 58. 58 is not a good example of any of these numbers because it's, it's a lot smaller than 260 still, and it's a lot bigger than the other numbers in the data set. But if we find the median, the median is still 18.5. So uh, the median is still kind of in the middle of most of the numbers. And so in this case, when you have an outlier, like 260, median is the mes most accurate measure of center. The, the outlier skews the mean, which means it makes it a lot bigger or smaller than it should be. And here it makes it a lot bigger. So in this case, if there's an outlier, like 260, you're going to choose median. All right? What if you have a survey or categorical data, like I was saying before, like favorite sports teams or something? Well, in that case, mode is the best measure of center. So uh, anytime you're doing any kind of survey where there's not numbers in the survey, where you're getting a category or a type of something for an answer, you're going to choose mode as the best measure of center. All right? So that's the lesson for today. Uh, you can... Go back, rewatch. Uh, make sure you understand what outliers are. And if you need to rewatch the number line part for the best measure or for the mean as a balance point, do that. Uh, and I'll talk to you next time.